a young couple vanishes without a trace, leaving behind three small children sleeping in their beds. The clues that remain only raise more questions with no answers as the police search the rivers, the mountains, and the lakes of eastern Kentucky. Did these loving parents drive away during the night and abandon their children? Or were they involved in a tragic accident? Or was it something more sinister? Corbin was your typical small rural town in eastern Kentucky. With a population of barely more than 7,000 people, it was the type of place where everybody knew everyone. It was here that Claude and Sue Shelton were raising their young family. The upstart family lived in a small trailer park. Sue was a 27-year-old homemaker who spent her days tending to her three small children. Claude was a hard-working, blue-collar type fella. He had always loved cars and grown up turning wrenches on them. So it was only natural when he became the head mechanic at the local muffler and tire shop in Corbin. Folks who knew Claude described him as a family man and a perfectionist who was quiet-spoken. Indeed, he was steady and dependable. He had worked at the same shop for the past 10 years, five days a week, like clockwork. And whenever he wasn't busy working on customers' cars, he could always be found tinkering or shining on his pride and joy. His 1967 two-door Ford Galaxy 500. By all appearances, by May of 1971, Claude and Sue were living a good, simple life, and things were looking up for them. They only owed one more payment on their trailer, and they were dreaming of buying a bigger home for their growing family. And with only one week left in school for the children, the fun days of summer were in the air. In many ways, it was the perfect life. Yet, what happened next was so shocking and mysterious that no one in Corbin, Kentucky would have ever believed it. And... More than 50 years later, local folks still wonder exactly what happened to Claude and Sue Shelton. Hey guys, JD here from the Appalachian Storyteller, and today's video is sponsored by June's Journey. If you're like me, and you enjoy a good murder mystery, and you're really going to enjoy this game. For me, I find that June's Journey relaxes me when I take a break from writing stories and video production. In fact, that's one thing I really like about this game, the storytelling and the high quality production that takes place during the 1920s with beautiful and colorful and carefully crafted scenes. You get to play the part of June Parker, a charismatic detective who returns to her home at Orchard Island after the murder of her sister and her brother-in-law. The game takes place on this island in a really cool mansion. In fact, you can customize, remodel, and fix your mansion and Garden Island any way you like, as well as finding hidden objects throughout the game as you look to solve the mystery. And the best part of all, June's Journey is free to download. In fact, you can download the game right now by clicking the link in the description or via the QR code on the screen. June's Journey is available on Android or iOS devices, as well as on PC through Facebook games. The morning of May 21st, 1971, started just like any other day at the Sheldon household. Being Friday, there was a bit more excitement than usual in the air, with the weekend coming up, and the weather outlook was perfect. By 6 a.m., Claude had finished his coffee and his breakfast before making the short drive to the muffler shop for work. Sue spent the morning getting the three kids dressed for school and making them breakfast before seeing them off at the bus stop. Back at the muffler shop, it was a slow day, and being the perfect day for a drive, Claude asked for the afternoon off. After promising his boss, that he would work half a day on Saturday to make up the time. And by the time the children were home from school, Claude and Sam had packed the Ford up and decided to make the scenic drive up to Claude's mother's house, about 20 miles away in Williamsburg. Now, this area of Kentucky is majestic to drive through with the nearby Cumberland Falls State Park and the Daniel Boone National Forest and the beautiful Laurel River Lake where a new dam was being constructed. The young family enjoyed the cruise in the father's prized automobile with the perfect 70-degree weather and the windows rolled down. Upon arriving at Claude's mother's house, they spent the entire afternoon and evening there, eating supper 
and enjoying catching up with one another. In fact, time seemed to pass so fast that Claude didn't realize that it was suddenly past midnight and he had to be at work at 6 a.m. the next morning down at the shop. With that in mind, Claude and Sue loaded up the kids and drove home, arriving between 1 and 2 a.m. and immediately putting the kids to bed. Now, what happens next still baffles investigators to this very day. And here are the facts concerning the next events of the early hours. According to the oldest child, who was 11 at the time, her younger siblings were fast asleep once they were put to bed. Yet, she was still awake and could easily hear her parents talking in the living room through the paper-thin trailer walls. And they were talking about going to get a late-night snack and coffee from the truck stop that was five miles down the road. Come on, it's time to go. If you're going with me, let's go, she heard her Paul say. And just like that, the couple left their three children in the bed as they drove off into the night at 2.30 a.m. By the next morning, the children woke up and saw that their parents weren't in the bed and their car wasn't in the driveway. After eating breakfast on their own, the children called one of Sue's friends to see if they knew where their parents were. But they too had no clue. And by 7 a.m., Claude's boss knocked on the door, wanting to know where he was and why he didn't show up to work. No, none of this made any sense. By all accounts, Claude and Sue Shelton loved their children, and Claude had been steadily employed for 10 years, and they had a good family life. There on the kitchen counter was a savings jar containing $600 cash, and beside that was Sue's purse, which was left behind. And today was payday at work, and Claude didn't even pick up his paycheck. Police were immediately contacted, and an investigation was launched right away. Detectives began interviewing the employees of the local gas station, which was the only business in town that was open at the time of the disappearance, and it was thought to have been their destination. Yet, the employees stated that they had never seen them. In fact, no one had been at the gas station at all between the hours of 1 and 3.30 a.m. in the sleepy little town. This concerned officials. It was unthinkable that well-respected parents would simply abandon their children. Perhaps an accident had taken place. So over the next three days, the Kentucky State Police scoured the entire state, interviewing everyone in Whitley County. News stations ran the story repeatedly, yet there were no leads. And soon the Civil Air Patrol and four rescue squads from nearby towns were searching the woods and the lakes for nearly a week. But there were no clues. Claude and Sue Shelton had vanished without a trace. The Shelton children spent the final week of school staying at a family friend's house. Yet, once school was out, investigators still didn't have a clue of what had happened. So at that point, the children went to stay with Sue's mother in Knoxville, Tennessee, for what everyone thought was a short visit. However, more than 50 years later, Claude and Sue Shelton never reappeared. What happened to them? Why did they leave their children and all their money at home at 2.30 in the morning? It seems unthinkable that they would have simply abandoned their three young children. Everybody who knew them said they always had their children with them and they were good parents. Now, during the time of the Shelton's disappearance, nearby Laurel Lake Dam was under construction. And over the years, police and diver teams have searched several areas of the lake looking for Claude's 1967 Ford Galaxy 500. Yet, Laurel River Lake is massive with over 206 miles of shoreline and is nearly 280 feet deep. Perhaps the only possible clue that was ever found in this case was provided by an 18-wheeler driver who passed through Corbin at 1 a.m. on the night of the disappearance. He seemed to remember that a car was on the side of the road with its hood up. Is it possible that Claude saw the stranded vehicle on the side of the road and offered assistance due to his mechanical skills? 
And is it possible that the couple fell prey to foul play because of this? In 2009, a glimmer of hope came when the Sheldon children entered their DNA into the Unsolved Crimes database. It was thought that it might lead to a positive identification in other unsolved cases, and perhaps to bring closure to this mystery. Yet, no matches were found anywhere in the United States. More than 50 years later, Claude and Sue Shelton and their 1967 Ford have never been seen again. This case remains open and unsolved with the Kentucky State Police. What about you? What do you think happened to them? Let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click the link in the video description below to download June's Journey for free today. Thank you.